know the Earth is round by observing it closely. If you watch a ship as it disappears over the horizon, the bottom will vanish first, and then the top disappears later. It looks like it's sinking, kind of. That's because the Earth is curved. You know the Earth is round because you can observe it closely, really. Yet when people start really looking into this and they start observing it closely and they don't see any curve, then they'll go and say, oh, well, it's too subtle to see, even when you observe it closely. Yeah, okay. But somehow you can notice it when a ship goes off in the horizon just a few miles away. Something like 30 odd miles. It's really nothing in the grand scheme of things. And you can see it going over a curve there. Yet, when you look at something that's 30 miles away, you don't see it go over a curve. You can still see the whole building. All right, okay. But, okay, if we assume the sky is correct, then that would mean the sun going over the horizon would also debunk the flat earth because it clearly is going down, right? It appears to move downward. So clearly it must be. In order to analyze this though, we need to address the topic of atmospheric refraction, which also plays into what this guy is talking about when he thinks he sees a ship going over a curve. But we'll look at both sides here. I honestly don't understand how we could take this guy seriously when he looks at something like this and says, oh, well, it looks like it's doing something, therefore it must be doing it. Our eyes can't play tricks on us. There's no such thing as illusions. Okay, moving on. Okay, so Wikipedia actually defines atmospheric refraction as the deviation of light or other electromagnetic waves from a straight line as it passes through the atmosphere due to the variation in air density as a function of altitude. So it's saying as the air gets closer to the ground, it's more dense. So atmospheric refraction near the ground produces mirages and can make distant objects appear to shimmer or ripple and appear elevated or lowered, stretched or shortened with no mirage involved. So now let's take a look at the sun. Is this not what we see? Can we not see ripples in the setting or rising sun? I think we are clearly seeing atmospheric refraction here. Could we also conclude then that due to this light refraction, the sun appears to be lower than it actually is, as previously stated. Now people will argue that the flat earth theory must be wrong because if the sun were circling overhead, then it must get smaller and smaller until it ultimately disappears. This is essentially what happens though, but as the sun approaches this vanishing point, the light begins to distort and refract, making it appear to sink below the horizon. In some parts of the earth though, this refraction does not take place. Places that lack air pollution and chemtrails, I think. The location in this video I feel is definitely one of those places. But going back to chemtrails, why is it that in the morning I always see more of them over the sun than anywhere else? I look to the west, it's relatively blue sky. Over the sun, almost twice the amount of chemtrails in some cases. They're hiding the sun for a reason, and quite possibly I think that reason is to discourage and prevent people from observing any possible apparent shrinkage or growing of the sun as it rises and sets. Or rather, as it gets closer and further away. So couldn't the phenomenon of the sun turning distorted and rippled, appearing to sink and changing darker color happen on a globe too? I mean, after all, we are rotating away from the sun, which increases the distance the light is traveling to us, right? That can account for the light refraction, right? On a globe Earth thin, you would need to justify that the sun is not actually moving further away from the observer, but the observer is rotating away from the sun, which we are in that model. But how far are we going? The Earth is rotating at about 1675 kilometers an hour, 1675. Depends on where you are though, it's faster toward the equator. Now to make the math work, we would need to convert those kilometers to miles. This would be about 1,041 miles per hour. It's pretty fast. It's fast as shit. Now from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., approximately when the sun sets, you would go 6 times 1041 miles, or about 6,246 miles, not accounting for the curvature though. Just to make the math simple, that's about how far you would go. So that's a long way, right? 
explains the light refraction, changing color, mirage? And I don't think so. Not at all, actually. You need to consider the relative distance that you are rotating away from the sun out of the whole distance. The sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. Relatively, we are not moving far away from the sun at all in this time period from 12 to 6. In fact, we moved 6,246 miles away from the sun out of the total 93 million. So doing the math, the distance we traveled divided by the total distance is 0.0006716 or 0.0672% rounded. So objects look distorted and refracted as they get further away. Good, I get that. But you're trying to tell me that an increase or decrease in distance that light travels of a measly 0.062% is going to cause the sun from looking white in a perfect sphere to dark orange rippling and misshapen? On the flat earth model, these calculations are not exact, but the sun could easily go from the estimated 3,000 miles above your head at noon to 5,000 miles away from you at sunset, which is almost double the distance out of the total distance. That's almost a 50% increase, about 744 times that of 0.0672. This much larger increase or decrease in distance could much more easily explain the phenomenon of light refraction regarding the sun and the distortedness and change in color. So really, we are not moving that far away at all. You could say, oh, well, the light is traveling, if it's directly overhead, you know, it's traveling a few thousand miles, and then when it sets, it's traveling thousands of miles more. Yeah, but out of the total 93 million miles, it doesn't add up. In the grand scheme of things, when you look at pictures like this, you know, you can say it's practically traveling the same distance. So light refraction is used by people who believe in the globe to try and debunk the flat earth with regards to being able to see things in the distance that you should not be able to see with a curve. You know, they would say, oh, well, it's just refracted upward. So that way you can see it. So let's take a look at Toronto. There are videos on this that will tell you how far away the cameraman is from Toronto that you can watch to get a better idea of the topic. Now, here I just wanted to be safe and I wanted to show you, you know, what it would look like if, uh, you know, what the shortest distance is. I don't know how far away this guy is. From Toronto but just to be safe I think this is pretty close to the shortest distance you can have but seriously though look at this picture how far away do you think he actually is looking at this very easily it could be 30 miles so if Toronto if we say this guy is about 29 miles away and the earth is an obese spheroid with a circumference of 24,901 miles then according to the curvature formula 8 inches times 29 miles squared, or 841, is 6728 inches. That's about 560 feet of drop. The tallest building in Toronto is the CN Tower, and it's about 550 meters, or 1804 feet. This means that almost half of this building should be obscured by the curvature of the Earth, yet we can see it. The entire building and a multitude of other buildings that are 550 feet or lower. We really should not be able to see them. Our view should look more like this. So these globalists will be quick to tell you that the reason why you can see further than you should is because of light refraction. The light is refracting upward in this case, you see. So what we're looking at is a mirage. Okay, so I'm willing to admit that this might be relatively true. I mean, when you look at this video, you can see the ripple-like effects, you know, in the, the buildings. So, I mean, this it could be. It could be refracted upward in this case. Okay, so someone trying to debunk the Flat Earth will probably try and say that this Toronto skyline is a mirage, but 
The sun is an exception. Oh no, that's real. There's no mirage there, but we're actually moving away from it, and it's causing it to appear to go down due to the curvature of the Earth. If they are willing to say that this Toronto image is a mirage, refracting light upward, they must be willing to admit that this is also a mirage. But let's say they do. Because pictures like this clearly depict that it is a mirage, it's just being refracted the other way, being refracted upward. Then if it is being refracted upward, how can you explain how it appears to set and to sink on the horizon? And then they say, oh, well, that's just the curve. So you can't have it both ways. It's a mirage just causing it to look like that. We know that refraction works in both ways. It can refract up or down. So in this situation, if it appears to dip below the horizon and you admit that light refraction is at play here, then it must be refracted down. If it were truly the case, that it was actually being refracted upward, causing it to look distorted, and then it goes down just due to us rotating away from it, then this should not happen anywhere. Remember, with regards to what you think you learned in school about physics and science, school does not teach you to think critically. It just helps you become better at remembering what other people say about stuff. Now don't misunderstand me though, light refraction, density, perspective, all very valid, true, real physics. But that doesn't mean all of it is. Truth mixed with lies is a very powerful form of deception. You hear something that really resonates true to you, like density or light refraction, and you believe it. So that when they begin to get deep into the convoluted theory of gravity in the globe, you believe that too because that professor or teacher said one or two things that you like, and it makes you perceive them and the scientists that they lecture about as being knowledgeable and truthful. For this reason, half-truths are very dangerous. A half-truther can very easily make anyone believe anything that they say just by throwing little bits of truth that really resonate with a person and get them on their side. So take a look at this. This is a prime example of somebody who has really fallen victim to somebody who claims to be speaking the truth, but they're really just half-truths. He thinks that if the earth were flat, then the oceans would spread out, covering all the flat land masses. He can't conceive of the idea that there's different elevations on the plane. He just thinks, oh, flat? Oh, you mean whole thing. Okay. If you say it's flat, then that must mean there cannot be any basins where water can stay. People are programmed 